Hi, and we're back. Um, we're going to continue from the last lesson. We have the boiler in place, and we're going to do a few things right now just to uh, add some more detail and close off the ends of the volume, the, the model itself. So I'm still in perspective. I'm going to hit F4 so I can see the wireframe. I'm going to collapse the uh, edit poly in, in the stack here. I'm going to add another one. So I'm going to go to E, edit, edit poly. I'm going to expand this one out, go to edge, and here at the front end, I'm going to select an edge, and Alt and L, remember if things don't act properly, check your keyboard override, you can turn it on and off, edit poly sometimes does activate it and change the functionality of the keys. Um, okay, I'm going to zoom in a little, okay. And now, I'm going to go to the Scale tool. We're going to try something a little different now. I'm going to go in the middle, make sure that this triangle highlights. That means that we're scaling uniformly. I'm going to hold the Shift key, and with my mouse, the left button, I'm going to Shift, click, and drag. And just drag that in a little bit, just like that. That's a Shift drag. Uh, it's a common thing. You can use the Move uh, to shift drag edges to extend the model. You can shift scale, uh, shift rotate, which I don't recommend, but it does work. Um, so using the shift key in conjunction with some of your tools will actually allow you to clone or move or extend the model. And um, it's a really good way to model. It's a really quick way to model. Um, so with that said, I made that a little smaller. I might actually do a little bit more. So with the scale, I'm going to just scale it. I'm not shifting right now. Now I'm going to go to Move Tool. I'm going to hold down Shift, and along the Y axis, I'm going to shift it back a little. You can turn that a little so you can see what's going on there. Um, what happened is I'm shifting and dragging that edge back a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is Shift drag it again. May hit F3, and these boilers have like a compartment in the front where. Uh, I'm not sure what goes on there, but there's a door that we're going to add. And there is a compartment. I found some reference. Um, you know, reference is very important. Um, so you can check Google Images or your favorite search engine for images. There's always an image search on any popular search engine today. Um, you also have Wikipedia has some great information. Um, if you want to look for a reference on steam locomotives, um, I based this pretty much off of a Santa Fe light steam locomotive. Uh, you can search on the internet and find plenty of information and some really great large images. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. But anyway, let's extend this uh, insert in the boiler in a little bit more. So I'm going to shift and drag again. That's about the right distance based on what I had seen online. And now I'm going to go to the scale tool. I'm going to scale with the shift key and if we turn a little bit in perspective so you can see I'm going to hit alt Q to isolate the mesh and here's the uh, isolation window little dialog tells you that you're isolating the mesh and there we go you see this little inset that's the end now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to border over here in the stack on edit poly and I am going to, let's expand these graphite tools. Show full ribbon. And these are the graphite modeling tools. Um, there's some fantastic tools. Probably makes Max the best modeling application out, in my opinion, uh, right out of the box. You know, you can always add plugins to other softwares, but out of the box, these tools right here make this such a powerful modeler. So what we're going to do now, though, is use a simple tool. It's been there for a while, but they now added it to the graphite modeling tools. It's the cap poly tool and what we're going to do is just click that and you see right here what happened is it closed off that opening. Now if we were going to subdivide this model we'd probably want to tie this all up. Because we're not and because the chances of seeing inside this area are probably pretty slim we're going to leave it as is. Now if you're going to open the front hatch on your locomotive for any reason probably want to do some research and if the model needs more detail in there you're going to add it. You'll have the the tools and skills by the time this video is over to add any detail you'd like. So with that said we're going to leave this as is. I'm going to exit isolation. It's still there. 
just the way it was. And we're going to go to the opposite end. I'm going to do the border selection. I'm just going to click right here. Because this is an open edge, like a full circle opening, it's called a border because it's continuous. Um, I'm going to once again use the cap poly. And that, that caps it off. But what we have now is like a, a sharp transition between the backside and the actual surface, which probably isn't exactly what we want. But as we did earlier, because we're in edit poly, we can roll down here or in edge selection. And let's try the chamfer tool again. And you see that it's about an inch. It's kind of angular again, like it was earlier. So what I'm going to do is add a couple segments. I think three worked out well before. I'm going to hit the check mark. And now I'm going to go up to Smooth. Let's do Alt-Q. That isolates the mesh. And F4 to turn off, sorry, <laughs> F4 to turn off wireframe. Let's rotate around. You can see there's a nice highlight there at the end instead of looking sharp. When something has a sharp edge, regardless of what you're modeling, it just looks CG. So you want to give that little corner, that little chamfer on the edge. And up front, we're going to do the same thing, because you see right there, there's a difference between what we see here in the viewport and what we see here. And that, that difference, while right now isn't so bad, when you go to render, it makes a huge difference on how your models look. So if you want your stuff to look professional and catch highlights, add these little chamfers. Even if they're tiny, they have to give you that glint of highlight, because it just renders better. You know, it makes, it makes other people's jobs easier when you give them a good model that'll react with light and, and reflection. It's just a good practice. So with that said, I'm going to exit isolation. I'm going to come up front here. And where we have this sharp transition at the end of the, the boiler, I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to do an edge selection. Alt and L will loop. Don't forget the override if things don't work properly. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and use chamfer again. There it is. It's also up in the graphite tools if you need it. It's it's in one of these rollouts, um, so it's not a worry. You can click on these rollouts and you can see that there's drop downs for everything. Look, we have it right here. So let me show you a, a different different way to access this. Um, we have chamfer, and if you go to that arrow, you'll get the chamfer settings, which is what we want. I'm going to click that. Click that the same dialog we use. You can see it saved the values and everything and I like the way that that looks so I'm going to say OK. And I think just for safety's sake I'm going to do that here again. So we're going to select this edge, Alt and L for loop. You can hit um, the colon or semicolon key. It will repeat the last operation. So if you look right there I just hit one key and it actually took the value from the last operation I did and it reapplied it. And uh, it's a good way to work too. It's, it's kind of like hitting G and the G key in Maya. Uh, same kind of principle. But it's only the last operation. With that said, F4, and you can see we have some highlights going on. And this is looking pretty good now. I think it looks really good. So I'm going to pause the video here. And in the next video, we're going to cover making the front door or the cover and possibly making the rear section. So I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.